Today, I'll be putting my sublimation knowledge to the test with a make market slate tile. With its smooth, flat surface ready for design, I'll walk you through the entire process step by step. Will it turn out like I'm hoping, or will the slate bring unexpected challenges? I'll be sharing the results, good or bad, so stick around to see how this project turns out. Hey everyone, it's Lean from ColoradoLean.com. Welcome back to the craft room. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I have been absolutely intrigued with these slate tile sublimation projects that I've been seeing online. So I had to give it a try. I'm going to be using this beautiful image that I found on the Microsoft website through Word. Um, this is printed on a sub sublimation paper with my Epson SureColor F170 sublimation printer. So I'm just going to set this aside for a few moments. And we're going to be working with a six by six slate tile from Make Market. Um, these are, in my estimation, kind of expensive. Uh, but when Michaels had this on sale for half price, I thought, I'm give it a try. So when we open up the package, it has two little plastic feet to set the tile in. So we will definitely set those aside. And then we have our, our tile. Um, let's go ahead and get this plastic off. Now I can see one little uh, divot in the tile itself. So that is definitely going to play a part in the finished design. So with this little divot in mind, I'm going to be very careful how I place this on my design. Um, I do have the majority of it that is really black and I don't want that in that particular location. Um, so these tiles are 100% actual slate, which give them a nice weight. The surface is incredibly smooth, um, but it does have a natural chipped edge to it. And there is sublimation substrate on that. So with that in mind, we definitely wanna make sure our image is larger than the actual size of the tile. We want to do our best to actually get the image into these little divots so there isn't a, a white line. Um, I know that's not 100% easy to do, um, but you know what? We're gonna give it our best shot. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to clean this tile and I'm going to use my 91% isopropyl alcohol. Just gonna pour that on my coffee filter and then we will clean this. And I'm definitely going to make sure to clean the edges as well. Okay, so I have brought in my heat resistant tape from Amazon and I brought my image back in. Now I wanna be very careful where I put this divot. Um, again, the image has a lot of black down here. So I wanna put this probably up in the sky where it's a little less noticeable. So let's Put it up in this corner here. 
So pardon my head while I get this lined up. So we'll go ahead and put that there. Um, today I'm going to be using longer strips of tape just to make sure this gets adhered to the paper. Now I know this isn't going to be perfect and I'm going to have to be extra careful when I move it, which is fine. Okay, so I may be able to move this perfectly right now. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about the time and temperature. According to the recommendations from Make Market, uh, we need to press this at 356 degrees for 360 seconds. Um, I'm going to be using my HTV Ron Auto Heat Press today. And the timer for that only goes up to 199 seconds. Uh, so I did a little bit of math and 360 seconds is six minutes. So I'm going to set my heat press for 180 seconds, which will be three minutes. And I will press that twice. I purchased this silicone mat for my heat press. Um, I thought it would work better than the mat that came with it. However, today I'm going to put this mat back on my heat press. Um, it has a little bit more give. So I believe that that will push the tile into the paper while it's sublimating and have a better chance of getting the natural edges sublimated as well. Um, there are also different ways of thinking about this. Um, I have seen videos where they have placed the tile on the mat and the paper on top. And I have seen videos where they place the paper down and the tile on top. Uh, both of them, or both ways of doing it, have succeeded and they have failed. And so... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my paper down and the tile up. And of course, I'll have butcher paper on both sides. Uh, so let's go ahead and rearrange the room. And we will get the HTV Ron Auto Heat Press warming up. And let's give this a try. Okay, so we are ready to get the HTV Ron Auto Heat Press warming up. Um, we are going to set the temperature for 356 degrees. Um, so I can do 355 or 360. Let's just go up to 360, see what happens there. And then again, for our time, we need 360 seconds. Um, the HTV Ront only goes up to 199. So we are going to go up to 180 degrees. And we will run this twice. Okay. And I want to make sure to turn my auto button on. Now, I usually only use two pieces of butcher paper, one on top and one on the bottom. But I'm going to use two pieces on the bottom today. So we'll get that on there. And I'm also going to use the heat resistant gloves that I got from Viver with my uh, tumbler press. 
because this slate, when it comes out, is going to be scorching hot. So let's go ahead and wait until our heat press comes up to temperature, and I'll be back with you then. All right, so we are up to temperature, and I'm going to carefully move my slate, and I'm going to put this in the exact center of the platen. That way it will get even pressure. My thinking for putting the two pieces of butcher paper down was because there was a lot of ink over here and I wanted to be very careful with it. But since the paper is on top, or since the, the ink is facing up, I think I'm gonna move this second sheet and just have it on top. I think the bottom plate will be fine. So instead I'm gonna put two pieces of butcher paper on top. Okay, so now I'm going to run this for 180 seconds. As soon as the top platen rises, I will push the R button again to lower it back down for the second 180 seconds. And I'll be back with you at the end and we'll see how this make market slate turns out. All right, we are down to the last three seconds. And we are done. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Um, there's not much ink around the edges of this, which, you know, I'm not really surprised. There's quite a bit of, quite a bit of height on that tile. Oh, let's let that sit for just a few seconds. That is pretty, and it is really hot. Um, I did not get the desired effect around the edge like I had hoped, um, but yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool because holy cow, even through these gloves that is very warm. Um, so I'm gonna let this cool and turn everything back around and then we'll come back for the final look. All right, so our tile has been sitting out for, uh, I don't know, about 45 minutes and it has cooled down. Um, you know, I think I wanna call this about a 90% win. <laughs> um, the main image turned out absolutely beautifully. Um, the little defect that was in it is just right here and you can't tell at all. Um, I wasn't able to get color around the edges like I had hoped I would. And down here on the bottom, um, it like didn't even completely cover the entire top of it. So um, I'm going to have to do a little bit more research and figure out another way of padding the bottom of it so that this tile will sink into the picture a little bit more evenly. Um, to set it up on the stands, you just put it in there like that. Um, I know you're not going to be able to really see this, but I will take some pictures and I will put some still shots here in the video for you. Uh, but yeah, it, it's still very pretty. Um, the colors are as I expected them to be. Um, this is a beautiful golden sunset. And yeah, so about an 85-90% win. 
Um, I am going to do a little more research, like I said. Um, I did have one issue. Uh, after the first 180 seconds, the platen went up and I hit the R and it started to go back down, but then it went right back up, hit the R again, started to go down, went right back up. Um, it turned out that the uh, bottom tray had kicked out a little bit. So I just had to push that back into place, lock it in, and then I was able to put it down for the last 180 seconds. Um, so, you know, just something to think about if you are using the HTV Ront Auto Heat Press. Uh, just make sure the tray is pushed all the way in. But yeah, um, I have another slate. Um, this is a five by seven. Well, it's a four and a half by eight and a half. Um, so I'm going to hold off on doing that one until I can figure out another way to get more ink around the edges. Um, but until then, I am going to call this a win. So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when I put up the next video. Until then, have a great day, you guys. Bye.